Great. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our next um, next session of our spiritual power tools. And I am going to get my screen on here. Where's your screen? Okay. All right. And if you're not muted, if you could mute, that'd be awesome. Thank you in advance. All right. I am going to get this going. So interesting, um, interesting process this week as I was going through my, um, my PowerPoint and looking at everything that I, I have coming up. So I'm, I'm, I've taught the, a class on, in a series of classes on spiritual power tools before. So I'm incorporating my old PowerPoint into our sessions together. And um, it was so fascinating to see what I had down for the chapter on the subconscious mind. There were these really Random. thick um, um, tidbits of information that um, I could spend at least 15 minutes each on those tidbits. And it made me realize that um, I'm trying to share 28 years worth of my own spiritual education and understanding and experience in these little tidbits of going through the book. So I thought, you know what, I need to kind of slow down and back up so that, um, so that you guys can know um, and, and to have a, the opportunity to ask questions and to incorporate things like I have over time. And you're coming to the table with your um, preconceived um, notions and, and experiences and understandings that you've gained from within yourself. So that's coming to the table too. And, and we're all just trying to get on a similar page um, not because this is the only page, <laughs> the Spiritual Power Tools, or the Center for Enlightenment, but because, um, you know, it's it just, you know, to understand all the concepts, I need to kind of put it in a broader perspective. So anyway, I was, I was in awe to a certain extent by how integrated all of this has become for me. 28 years, right? It's not like it just happened in a week, but I, I just took it for granted how natural it is for me to think this way. So anyway, so I want to make sure that it's meaningful for you too. I guess that's kind of what I want to say about that. So, um, so this week we are going to get to the wild and wonderful subconscious mind. Um, and I'm going to uh, review a little bit. Okay, so somebody's saying it. My voice sounds distorted. Distorted, like my uh, microphone is too high. Um, let's see. I can probably fix that. So we're going to talk about. Let me get back on here, and I'll just fix my volume. We're going to talk about the subconscious, but I want to um, again kind of regroup and. Um, share. Hopefully that's a little better. Okay. Okay. So anyway, I'll go back to my screen here. All right. Technology is so wonderful. Resume slideshow. Okay. Um, so we're going to go through a few chapters, maybe we will we'll get as far as we get. I, it is a wishful thinking that I uh, that we have this list here, but um, the the chapter five is the iceberg of the subconscious, conscious, subconscious, and superconscious mind. Um, chapter six is the process for unconsciously unveiling your soul. Chapter and I think spiritual de detox is part of that um, unveiling chapter. And um, there's a section on steps to take to consciously participate in your soul's evolution. And then we're going to introduce spiritual power tools. We shall see if 
that actually um, comes to pass. Okay, so oh, where did where did I go? Did I just? Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. So anyway, so where I want to start, given my whole process around this, and my feeling like, oh my gosh, I can't. It kind of made me laugh. Like I've been teaching this in classes over the years in various forms and various ways, and I feel like I've been assuming that other people understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> I enjoyed it, but, and, and people came to classes, so somebody enjoyed it, but um, I just want to make it, I just want to make it accessible because this, what I teach and what I do as Lynn, not as, you know, somebody who's studied with Jane Elizabeth and the Center for Enlightenment and Soul Evolution and all of that, but what I do is try to make applicable this spiritual understanding because our spirituality and our psychology go hand in hand. And so anything that we're doing to support ourselves in this lifetime is spiritual. It is a spiritual step. So as a therapist, you know, I, I copied this paragraph on the slide from my homepage on my website for my practice. And it's exactly what I try to do. And it's the perspective that I take with any client who comes in to see me. We are all here to evolve into more conscious, responsible individuals. Mental health issues arise when we're out of alignment with what's happening within and around us. As we embrace and adjust to our life situations, working through our disappointments and broken expectations, our equilibrium is restored. That's a big sentence though, right? That's, that's where the work is, right? Where, anyway, okay, so, so much and everything. Okay, we feel stronger and more capable to accept what is in front of us to do with new joy and understanding. But embracing our disappointments and broken expectations in life can be really hard because we want what we want when we want it, <laughs> you know? And then we, we end up fighting against things or, or, we're not making peace with something and it's cause we don't know why, you know, we can't understand why that's happening. So anyway, so anytime we are working with moving towards a goal that we want or moving towards a healing that we want, we are taking spiritual steps. Um, Jane Elizabeth says, you know, everything you do is spiritual. Everything we do is spiritual. So, this is my perspective, whether I'm working with somebody who is atheist or who is a mainstream fundamentalist Christian or whatever. I don't have to talk about my perspective, but I'm holding that space of, you know, we are all evolving. We are all trying to figure this out. Just like in the pandemic right now, we are all trying to figure out well, parents are trying to figure out how to support their kids with online classes and teachers are trying to figure out how the heck do you do online classes and the kids are figuring out how do I do online classes and, you know, how do I not be distracted? Maybe they're not so interested in how they do that, but the parents are. And, you know, so, so in life, in our, in our world, we are all just trying to figure out how do we do this? How do we do life? So, Everything that we do, every step we take is spiritual. It's part of our expression. It's part of our, our light. It's part of our purpose, you know, to be in alignment with ourselves. Oh, my gosh. That's everything. That is everything. Whether we become enlightened and move into the fourth dimension in this lifetime or if we don't do it for another five lifetimes, who cares? Who cares? What matters is that we are doing our part to, to be the most of our whole self as we can be in this lifetime. And that is great. And so these spiritual power tools work to that end as well. So no matter where we are on what our heart's desire is, we can apply these spiritual tools, spiritual power tools, to what is in front of us to do. And that's, that's the beauty of it. All right, so now I ask you so that you can have in mind 
how these things might apply for you, what is your heart's desire? What is your biggest heart's desire? And feel free to share it in the chat if you feel so moved. You don't have to, because that's, that can be very personal and private. But what's your heart's desire? The perfect relationship, or at least a good relationship, um, career, family, expression through art or science or nature. What, what inspires you? What makes you act? Because our, where our desire is, so goes our actions. You know, and that's why there's that saying, you know, our actions speak louder than words, right? Well, I can say that, you know, nature inspires me, but never go out of the house and live in the city and not really do anything nature-like. So then it's not really my heart's desire. You know, my words aren't in alignment with my actions. Um, so what, what do your actions show that you're desiring right now? And maybe your actions are showing that you desire something you don't really want. Well, that's good information, right? You can use that information to align your actions more with your desires. What pers uh, personal growth areas are you working on? Where are you trying to better yourself right now? Is it with your health? Is it with family members, relationships of any kind? What, what are you doing to do that? And um, who in your life is always by your side? And who in your life challenges you? Those are really important um, questions to ask because the people who are there by our side all the time are supporters and we need people like that. And those people who are in our lives that challenge us are important and we need people like that because they push us up against ourselves so that we can, you know, hopefully we're not just blaming the other person. Hopefully we're going, okay, why? Am I feeling the way I'm feeling? What's going on inside that, um, that is pushing on me here? So, oh, why does it, did it just do that? Hmm. Okay. So one person is saying to be inspired and enjoy life more. That's awesome. I forgot that this might, let me check this, the chat it sometimes moves off the PowerPoint. Okay. So yeah, so and to enjoy life more, that's so wonderful. And how do you enjoy life more? You reduce your stress and you learn how to manage what's happening in your world so that it's not ruffling you. And that's your responsibility because isn't that great if, if life just happened the way we wanted it to happen? That would be great, but it doesn't happen that way. So we have to adjust how we're approaching whatever it is so that we can not get stressed and enjoy, enjoy more what is happening. All right, there we go. Oh, now I can do that without it leaving. Um, I'm hoping to find the peace within me and be happy within myself. Beautiful, beautiful. That is great, that is great. And then as you're thinking about what your heart's desire is, also think about how are my actions leading me there? How are my actions supporting my heart's desire? And that right there is a beautiful, huge, work to make sure that that our actions are supporting our heart's desire the thing that we say is our heart's desire you know it's very important and, and is it is it going to challenge us to do things that we um that we may not want to do absolutely but that's how we grow you know paramahansa yogananda who wrote autobiography of a yogi that i shared in the powerpoint last week um, said, you know, you have to, if you want to become a stronger wrestler, you have to wrestle with a stronger wrestler than you are. If you wrestle with a weaker wrestler, then you will be weaker. If you wrestle with a stronger wrestler, you will become stronger. So, and that, that resistance in us, when we are working with it and pushing up against it, it helps our will, it helps imp our empowerment become stronger because we are overcoming something and that overcoming something is what helps us propel forward it helps us to um, um it just strengthens our attributes that we use to um 
that we use to get through anything that we use for the next goal. Once we've achieved, oh, I've got peace of mind. Awesome. Great. So now what do I want? And then it helps us with the next thing that is coming into our lives. How else am I going to grow now if I have peace? That's great. I've got all this strength and I've got all this experience now that I can go to the next thing that inspires me and excites me. And I can embrace that with, with all the strength that I have come to be one with within myself and own. It's about owning that experience and owning that goal and owning the strength that got us to that goal. Oh, my heart's desire is to be free from the thoughts that I associate with fear, or at least not fear the thoughts. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so continue to, to think about these things. I'm just going to ask again to make sure that your microphone is muted. I'm hearing a little bit of stuff in the background, just, just so that it makes it easier for everybody else to hear. Thank you in advance. All right. Okay, so... What is life all about anyway? It's grabbing onto the next opportunity to grow. It's becoming more of who you are. It's leaving behind outdated beliefs and behaviors that aren't working anymore. And we know what those are. You know, you've heard people say maybe that, you know, what is the definition of insanity? It's doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Clinically, that's not accurate, but, <laughs> but we get the metaphor behind it. And, um, you know, and we do that. We do that as human beings. We have this, you know, I think I have to do this to get what I want. If I keep doing that and not getting what I want, then sometimes instead of evaluating and, and redirecting myself, I can say, okay, well, I'll just try harder then. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just do the thing that isn't working harder and more mm, in a more focused way. And maybe it'll work next time instead of saying, wow, that hasn't worked. And if we're looking at our soul and evolution, it probably hasn't worked for the last 25 lifetimes. But we come back and we think, let's try it again. <laughs> and we do that, I promise you, we do that. So we're conscious, of, conscious enough now, let's step back and go, okay, that's not working. So what, what, what do I need to do instead? And so these spiritual power tools and learning about the subconscious and, and all these little treasures that are in the spiritual power tool book um, help to teach us and remind us how to step back and go, okay, this isn't working. What do I need to do here? This isn't working. What do I need to do? So, you know, our life is also, each lifetime is about learning how to commit to and accomplish our goals and desires, um, expanding our awareness of ourself and the world around us, and evolving towards compassion and service to others. You know, people, and I know right now, maybe especially, it really looks like we are in um, just a really dark time, and indeed we are, but we're still all, the whole world continues to evolve towards compassion. And I will say this over and over again, because it's easy to, you know, look at our moment and, you know, just our moment that we're in, whether it's our country, our world, our own life, and say, oh my gosh, this is the worst I've ever felt, or this is the worst it's ever been, or whatever. But we think about it, if you go back 500 years, people were, you know, drawing and quartering each other in the middle of town. You know, we're not doing that anymore, most places, I guess. Um, but not as much as we used to. It's not as prevalent <laughs> as it used to be. So, you know, as a whole, our humanity is evolving towards compassion. And um, when I say service to others, I mean being aware of another person and what their need is in the moment and doing what we need to do to support that. You know, that's service to others. And that's probably something you all are doing now anyway. So, um, all right. Feel free to throw up any questions as well. So, okay. So now all that said, to give you that bigger picture, and this is applicable to everything, everything that we're doing, um, we will move on to chapter five. One, you are one-tenth conscious and nine-tenths subconscious. 
is the name of the chapter. And um, this iceberg picture is actually in chapter six. I'm not sure why we didn't put it in the iceberg chapter, but um, we did it. So, um, but anyway, this is the iceberg that's in the Spiritual Power Tools book. My consciousness is like the iceberg, one-tenth conscious. You know, what we know about ourselves is, is visible. It's visible to others. It's visible to ourselves. And then everything else is in our subconscious storage, okay? Um, so our subconscious is our storage for all of our experiences, not just this lifetime, but every lifetime we've ever lived. Um, our one-tenth, our conscious part, has very limited access to that bigger part of our subconscious, that bigger part of our iceberg, okay? And it's separated by a thin veil. And sometimes emotional reactions come through that veil. Sometimes we have leakages through dreams, through deja vu experiences. Um, you know, we pick up something that just feels familiar to us. The, the sensation of, you know, when you meet somebody for the first time that you really resonate with them or you're really, you have a big strong aversion to them, that's all coming from the subconscious mind. You know, and, and you can say, well, that's just intuitively picking up on their energy or whatever. Yeah, but their energy is touching something in us and that's why we're being made aware of it. So it's all, it's all related and it's all, you know, if we talk to about moving from the intellect to intuition, and all that our intellect can do is draw from our history. So even our intellect is drawing from that whole history of our souls, not just the history that we've experienced in this lifetime, but that whole history from our, our soul history, <laughs> from every lifetime we've ever lived. You know, this is, the subconscious is also referred to sometimes as the Akashic record, right? Our own Akashic record of you know, who, who we have been in other lifetimes and the emotional energy that's stored there and what needs to be done and all of that information is in our subconscious mind. All right. So when Jane Elizabeth is talking about, so we know what the conscious mind is. It's what we know about ourselves and what we can see about ourselves. The nine-tenth subconscious is what we don't know. And then the superconscious mind, she calls it, and I, I think that's a unity term, actually. I'm not sure if she had that as part of her vernacular before um, she got into unity. But, um, but the superconscious mind is that infinite intelligence, infinite spirit, God, whatever you want to call it. So that is everywhere, all over. So the superconscious mind is like the, the ocean and the air in the picture that it's everywhere. So we want to be aligned. We want our conscious mind to be aligned with our subconscious mind, which is then also aligned with our superconscious mind, our souls, our intuitive access to everything, <laughs> to everything. And when it's when we're not in alignment, that means just means that there's something for us to look at and let go of. That means there's something in our either conscious mind, maybe we know what it is or maybe we don't know what it is, but there's something that's blocking us from achieving that goal. There's something that's blocking us from achieving that peace of mind. There's something that's blocking us from, you know, not being managed by our thoughts all the time. So that's good information. It's like, okay, so what, am I, what do I need to see about this, right? That, that's our question when those blocks come up is what, what do you need? What are you trying to show me? What do I need to see here? All right. Um, intuition is how we access the subconscious mind consciously. So the subconscious mind throws up all the time. <laughs> okay, it's always throwing something out, whether it's in our dreams or we say something in a heated moment and we go, you know, where on earth was that coming from? Like last week I mentioned, I believe it was last week, um, I mentioned that that experience I had when my brother and I were wrestling and all of a sudden it went from fun to really bad, really fast. And I, and I yelled at him and I got really angry with him and, and, and I, I didn't like slam him down or hit him or anything, but I, but I felt this like viciousness come up in me. And that's all it took was for me to see that coming up through me. 
and it scared the bejeebus out of me. Like, who was that that just took over, you know, my body and, and was that hateful in, in a moment? And it just stirred me wanting to know where did that come from? Where did that come from? Because, because I, I didn't feel like I could trust myself. You know, how, if, if, that's, if that can come out, what else can come out? What, you know, and, you know, and that's something that, that I've been working on ever since because there's different pieces to that, not just with my brother. It wasn't, it wasn't about my brother. It was about um, me needing to see that impact and have it impact me enough that it, it drove me to find out what the heck was going on, what is down inside of me that needs to come out so that I'm not doing that thing that I did. Um, and this is a concept by um, Carl Jung, too, the psychoanalyst from um, later Freud and, and contemporary Freud. And he said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. And that is a powerful statement. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life. It will be in charge of your life and you'll call it fate. Instead of, oh my gosh, you know, I just sabotaged myself. And gosh, wouldn't it be great if I knew why I sabotaged myself or, um, you know, I, I need to forgive this person and I can't really forgive them and I don't know why. Or, you know, maybe it's just, you know, it's just fate or just this or just that instead of taking responsibility for, hey, my life isn't going the way I want it to be going and I don't know why. So let's find out why so that we can help shift that and be more in alignment with what belongs to us in this lifetime. Okay, so as we look and ask about those blocks, as we clear those blocks, then slowly that iceberg begins to chip away piece by piece. Little chunks of ice come to the surface where we can see them if we're paying attention. They come to the surface all the time, all the time. But what we do is we get uncomfortable with it. And we go, oh no, oh no, I don't wanna feel that. I don't want to think about that. I don't want to see that about myself. I don't want to see that I'm sabotaging myself. So we pack it back down into our unconscious part of our iceberg and we go about our day trying to, not changing, and trying to do the same thing we were doing before that wasn't working. So we want to be able to see those chunks of information that come up because then as we clear them, as we work with them, then we'll be more conscious. We'll be two-tenths conscious and then three-tenths conscious and so forth until that iceberg has dissolved into our wholeness, into our oneness. And we still have our unique vibration. We still have our unique self. We, we have, it's just a transformed self. Um, and this is, this is ultimately how we awaken to our whole self in infinite consciousness, step by tiny step. So even if it's, that's not your goal, it is the ultimate goal of every soul ever, but it doesn't have to be our primary desire, our conscious desire right now, because we have other things to do sometimes. And we have to do those other things first. If, if we want the perfect relationship, we have to have the perfect relationship before we go on to the next thing. You know, before we want that thing that's beyond our our human existence that we can have right here and now, but if something is more important to us, we have to do that. And it's the, it's the gift of the universe to help make that happen as, insofar as we're doing our part to work with that process too. So, you know, so whether it's awakening to your whole self and infinite consciousness, or if it's working towards a goal that you have in this lifetime, a state of mind, whatever, it's still about removing these blocks in your subconscious. It's still about looking at yourself and changing what needs to be changed, letting go of what needs to be let go of so that you can do what you want to do. Okay. So this is where it gets really fun because I am used to teaching this class in person with a whiteboard next to me and markers. 
so I improvised and used a stylus and a drawing pad connected to my computer. Um, in case you can't tell which picture was drawn by me, it's the one on the left. The, that is an iceberg. I'm glad you're all muted so I don't have to hear you laugh <laughs> at my artwork. Um, so that's an iceberg. We've got our one-tenth conscious on top and our nine-tenth subconscious underneath and the known part and the unknown part down there. And I wanted to show you how our brains reflect this, like our physical organ of the brain reflects this and how the, the brain um, experiences things, stores things, processes things, and um, deals with information. Okay, so on the right, the one I did it draw is the neocortex. So if you have your, um, your fist, tuck your thumb inside of your fist and put your fingers over it. This is your brain. You've got your reptilian brain down here, the, the brain stem and the, uh, your spinal column down here. And that's our instinct to simplify everything. And then in here, tucked away is our, our limbic brain, our emotional feeling brain, our fear center, our excitement center, everything emotion center. And then on top is our neocortex. And this is our rational part, our thinking part, our language and movement is all up here, but especially in the front is our rational process. So you can see that that top part of our brain is our conscious part of our mind-body system our physiology, it's the conscious part. And the emotional brain, you know, that kind of teeters, sometimes we're conscious about what we're feeling and, and a lot of times we're not. And then our instinct is way down there. So it really reflects that concept of that iceberg and that metaphor of the iceberg. And just like Jane Elizabeth says in her book, um, the conscious part of us, doesn't have full access to the unconscious part. And our neocortex doesn't have access well, doesn't have whole access to our limbic brain or our instinctual brain. You know, those things are just happening. So um, we are experiencing and taking things in all the time and it is all stored. Like if we're just looking at this lifetime, it's all stored in our mind-body system. Our, so our body, insofar as we're talking human physiology, our body is our iceberg. Everything is stored in our body. In brain spotting, a technique that I, that I use in my practice, in brain spotting we say what happens in the brain happens in the body. What happens in the body is a happening in the brain. <laughs> so it's all interrelated, but we're not conscious of it. It's storage. We carry it around, we react to it, but we don't know what the heck is going on most of the time. So that is like our, our what do I want to say, our, our spiritual, our astral, our emotional storage of lifetimes that we carry around with us all the time. So, okay, any questions about, any questions about that? I love the, I love incorporating the brain into spirituality and, and, and how things work because it's the same, right? It, if we're working on ourselves, like I said, psychologically, we are working on ourselves spiritually because it's all connected. All right. All right. This was done by me. Just in case you didn't tell. Okay, so this is how um, I may want to go back to that brain picture, but let's, let's do this first. So this is how, this is how our, our machine works. Okay. Our brain works this way. Our emotions work this way. Our whole self works this way. Okay. So all of these little, I forgot to tell you, <laughs> I, you know, because I assume you guys know things, but I forget to say things. So feel free to throw out questions. Um, so these little things down here are experiences. All those little circles in the subconscious part, those are experiences. The ones that are at the surface are this lifetime because they're more accessible to us and the rest are from all of our other lifetimes that we've ever lived, 
okay? So this pretty star out here is a thing. It's a person, place, thing, or situation that happens in our world. You see the little eyeball on my iceberg. And um, so we see something happening. We see somebody getting angry with us, or we see something disturbing, or we, um, we get yelled at by our boss at work, or our kid won't speak to us, or, you know, there's a gazillion different possibilities of what can be our trigger. So that star is the trigger, okay? And so our brain sees the trigger, and then that trigger goes into, like the, the information from that trigger goes into our brains, and then down into the subconscious or the subcortical, if we're talking about the brain, but we're talking about the whole self. So we're talking about, it goes in, where'd my mouse go, there it is. It goes in and it touches on everything that smells like that trigger. So if we have been triggered by our boss yelling at us, then that information goes in and touches on any time in the history of our souls where we have been yelled at. And if it's a big issue for us, especially what comes our, oh my gosh, there's so much to this. Okay, so this is fun to talk about, but make sure, make sure you're with me because I can't see you. <laughs> so, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to ask questions because it's a lot easier when I'm in person and I can see people glazing over or whatever, but okay. So then, so this trigger goes in, it touches on every other time that's ever happened to us. And what comes out is reaction, not just from that current situation that's happening, but from all those unprocessed situations that have ever happened that we have in our storage. And we, <laughs> on the situation, right? Maybe we don't do it to our boss in the moment. We go home and are, we're miserable and complaining for the rest of the night and we don't know what to do about it. And we just kind of stew, right? We're stewing in all of this emotional energy that has just come to the surface of our iceberg. And we don't know what to do with it. So we just kind of sit there and hang out with it Maybe we zone out on Netflix. Maybe we have some wine. Maybe we call that friend and complain. The one we know is going to help us feel justified in our anger. And we stay away from the person who's gonna to try to help us figure it out because, you know, I'm angry and I wanna be angry. So I'm feeling this and I'm doing this. And, you know, then I go back to work and then I'm just resentful and I'm angry and I'm, you know, whatever, I'm not processing it. So then that experience is going to get stored into my subconscious mind. This is what happens when we're on automatic, right? Hopefully this is not what is always happening because we're, we're good at looking at ourselves and processing what needs to be processed. So let's go back, I wanna make sure. Um, so, it, so somebody's asking, so it can feel like an over response to a situation. Yes, indeed. and you know, like that situation with my brother where I was like, oh my God, we were just playing. And not that we didn't, you know, somebody always ended up crying, I'm sure. But, you know, but it was, it was too much that was coming out of me. And that is always a rule of thumb for this is deeper than what appears. There's more happening here than meets the eye. So I may be angry at my boss, but, um, but I'm feeling more angry than it, I need to feel because all I have to do is apologize or all I have to do is have a little compassion. My boss is having a bad day. I just need to back off or, oh, well, I made a mistake. So what? I can fix it. Life goes on. Who cares? You know, it's fixable or I need to get another job or whatever. There's a, there's a solution for it. So, um, but my overreaction my over response is going to cloud how I'm able to see the situation if I'm not processing that through, right? Also knowing this, knowing that, okay, so my emotional reactions aren't just about what's happening now, it's, 
there's other stuff that can be adding to this. So, you know, so let me have some compassion on the emotions I'm feeling and just work on whatever I need to work on in the moment, but know that it's connected in a lot more ways than I'm aware of. And if we can just have that wider perspective, then we can do whatever we need to in the moment. You know, maybe I just need to forgive my boss for yelling at me. Maybe I just need to forgive him. Because if I'm forgiving him, if I'm forgiving my boss, okay, where's my pointer? There it is. Okay, so if I'm forgiving my boss, then I'm also helping to heal these four other spots in my subconscious. Maybe I don't know they're four. I probably don't know they're four. I probably don't know if there are 10, but at least I'm doing this one. And this little forgiveness that we're doing right now, right here today, is going to benefit the processing and the healing of these four other spots. And who doesn't want like healing times four, right? And five, if you count the current situation. You know, we're, we're going to keep that one from getting implanted in the, the, the subconscious, plus release some of the energy from those other things where the, those things don't have to affect us so more, so much. Okay, so there's a benefit to understanding how impactful that subconscious is that we carry around all the time. All right. Okay. So these spiritual power tools that we're going to be talking about, um, and I believe, depending on our time, I believe we will um, have time to start next time the actual one by one spiritual power tools. So you'll be able to see these are the, the activities, the processes that Dean Elizabeth came up during her process of clearing out her subconscious that helped her to release these things when they would come up. And so that's why they're valuable to us because they, you know, they, um, they, they're tried and true, right? They've been tested. <laughs> and um, so when we, there's just ways to work on these subconscious pieces. And some of them are, um, again, are, you know, I'm just working on being mad at my boss today. Yeah, that's what we think, but we're really, there's, there's more to it. If I have to stop and work on it, there's more to it than meets the eye. Oh my goodness. That was exciting. So we've got a thunderstorm over here and uh, the electricity just went out. Okay. So, this is, this is my little uh, concoction of how two icebergs get together. So this is Jim and Sally, and um, so exciting. So now we know what happens in Florida when there is a thunderstorm and the electricity goes out. So thanks for hanging in there. And um, all right, okay, so let me go back to my share screen here. So I'm not sure exactly where um, was the last place you guys saw, but come on. All right, so. This is my little um, image of two icebergs coming together. Okay, so I call them Jim and Sally, and we'll talk about Jim and Sally more when we're talking about karma and reincarnation and all of that way down the road, if you guys are interested. Um, but I just want to show you anytime two human beings are getting together, they are gliding into each other with their icebergs. And sometimes their icebergs meld really well together. And sometimes their icebergs crash into each other, <laughs> causing all sorts of ice chips to fly all over the place and poke people in the eye and <laughs> all of that. So anyway, so I just wanted to give you an image of when you are connecting with another person, you're connecting with their whole history. You're not just connecting with that body that you see in front of you you're connecting with our whole history and you know you can look at that from this lifetime right and that might be a little bit easier to see like okay i'm i have a history as lynn and you have a history as you just from this lifetime and even that can 
crash into each other sometimes, or even that can meld beautifully together. Um, but that depends on our, the makeup of our subconscious, right? It depends on our karma together. It depends on our history in our own lives and, and our own desires and that kind of thing. And so, you know, when we're looking at past lives and karma, it can get really complicated, right? Because look at all those lifetimes each person has had in this picture and maybe they're on ice skates too and maybe they will be able to dance you know on their ice with their icebergs together and, and have a beautiful time or maybe they're just pushing each other so they fall down because you know karma so anyway so just to give you a visual as you're interacting with other people so if I'm going back to that little example of my boss yelling at me, then, you know, then I'm, my iceberg is affected, as I showed in my example, but then also my boss's iceberg is in play also. And what, what is that dynamic? And um, I can't do anything about, about his or her iceberg, but I can know that it's there. And if I know that it's there, that helps me take a step or two back from the anger of, you know, that's happening when he's yelling at me. So, you know, just to kind of see how that can work and how knowing this, we don't even have to know all the details, but knowing that there's so much more going on than what my physical eyes can see. There's so much. And that's where our intuition comes in handy because our intuition is what can see and, and help us have more, more and more access to what's in the subconscious. But we have to be very strong in managing that subconscious material that we access. So we're not gonna be able to access it unless or in until we are at a point in our evolution where we can handle that information that's coming up. So, you know, so, but the nice thing is that we don't have to, we don't have to worry about that. That will happen if it needs to happen. And, who cares if it doesn't let me focus on what i'm here to do that's all we have to do that's all we have to do when i um moved to chicago and started teaching you know these kind of classes karma reincarnation and all of that people wanted to come to me for um you know i don't do past life regressions and then you know people wanted that i don't do um i trust my intuition and i trust the intuition of the person who's in front of me so if, if I'm supposed to see something, I'll see it. And if I'm not, there will be nothing in front of me. And if I don't see anything like karma or whatever, then I know that this person just needs to work on what's right in front of them to work on. Like we all do. We all need that. And if we're doing that, again, if we're doing what is in front of us to do and from the, our highest place possible, then we are helping to heal a lot of stuff in our past and we don't have to know all the details of those things so anyway okay all right so i think because of our little um lightning <laughs> endeavor here i think i'm going to leave this because this won't take very long next week um there's two slides three slides four Five, five slides, <laughs> five slides I'm saving for next week, just so we can have a little bit of meditation time. So I've been keeping everybody beyond our, beyond our hour. So, um, so let's just have a little meditation time, remembering that, that, that real center for enlightenment, that real enlightenment comes from just right inside our hearts. And whether it's enlightening us to, um, you know, have that relationship we want, if it's enlightening us to, you know, have the expression of our career that we want or whatever it is that we want, that connection with our higher self, whatever it is that we want, we will find it inside of us. We will find the blocks to it inside of us. And that finding that those blocks, even finding the blocks are treasures because then we can do something about them. If we don't see them, we can't do anything about them. So it's a beautiful gift to be able to see any blocks that stand between us and our heart's desire. So that center is in within you. So let's focus in on that center. I invite you to just locate where you're feeling most centered right now in your body. Take a deep breath. 
we're switching gears from my enthusiasm being thrown at you with all this information to listening within yourself, listening to your own self. And there's a beautiful light within each of us that is always propelling us forward. You know, if there's that tendency for humanity to evolve toward compassion, evolve toward better behavior, believe it or not, then we individually have that light that's always driving us to greater and greater love and expression of who we are. And find that center within you. And it helps to find a location in your body that feels most centered and just let your attention stay there. I always like focusing on my heart and even putting my hand on my heart so that my attention is even more focused. Everything we ever want or need is right inside of us. We just need to learn how to access it. And that's what this is about. That's why Jane Elizabeth put the spiritual power tools out there so that we have some concrete ways to access that which is within us. And if you look at any true spiritual path, all these things are included. All the ways to turn within, all the ways of how important your own center is. And just explore that center within you. Feel the safety. And just let go of everything. Feel that center holding you. It is both holding you and it is you.
and let your inner senses go out even farther and feel the whole universe, not just the physical universe, but infinite intelligence, infinite love, infinite wisdom, holding your center, which is holding you and all these are still you in whole. And feel that center within you again. Bringing with you the knowing that you've been held by the universe. You are always held by the universe. Feel that center within yourself. Feel yourself in your chair, in the room where you are. As you continue to land back in this present moment, say a prayer of gratitude in your own words. Gratitude for that universal support, gratitude for Uh, the opportunities to know yourself more. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now take a deep breath. And when you're ready, you don't even have to do it for a long time from now, but open your eyes and be here. And we'll continue next week with however far we get. Um, 
And I will patch together these two different recordings now from our lightning break. And um, thank you all for being here tonight. Always great to share with you and um, just hang out with you. And it's always good for me to prepare for this time as well. I learn and assimilate and grow. So that's left to you all. Bye-bye.